in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on 50 centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed hey. Is my God sing with me? and say, Lord, you are mighty. Shaka pariyata bahosa. Oh, you are mighty. Bless him. King of the ages. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The wisdom of the ages. We have come before him who is called the ancient of days. The one who began the beginning. Thank you for your presence. Neke pariyata basata malikapa. Come on, worship, bless him. Blessed King of Glory, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Him in spirit, worthy, worthy is your name. And Lord, tonight as a family on earth, we worship your man. Just see, sing it one more time. Holy are you, Lord.
Father, we worship you in the beauty of holiness. You are worthy to 
Thank you for your glory, the majesty of your presence. Oh, we thank you. We bless you for the gift of your presence. We bless you for your presence. Hallelujah. of his presence and throne exalted and we raise you up with our praise we we'll sing one more song
Lord, we thank you for the things that you are doing in our midst. Friends, every time you are exposed to the majesty of his presence, that's where we are changed. That's where we are transformed. Never miss out whenever the presence of God shows up. That's the time to receive. That's the time for impartation. The ancient understood this principle. Oh, we bless you. Sabaria kata nike baru soto. Leka bomba sabaria kata. Keep making men their spirit of God. Fashion us according to the patterns of our destinies. I live to serve your majesty. Very simple song. I live to serve your majesty. I live to serve. I live to serve. Exodus 33. From everlasting to everlasting, we declare that thou art God, the one who is and was and is to come. Before you there was none other, and after you there will be none other. You are the custodian of the mysteries of the ages. You are Lord, and we bless you. It's our honor to serve your majesty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Like my brother rightly shared, Koinonia is a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I like you to participate in everything that we're doing in this place. Hallelujah. Because this is how we are changed. The word of the Lord says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He says, and we all with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror. Even the glory of God, he says, we are changed. You may not realize how much you are being changed in his presence. But there is always transformation because when his glory shows up there is a potential difference and we begin to adjust and align ourselves until we become like him so this is holy ground hear me now this is holy ground my friend, this is holy ground. Hear me now. This is holy ground. My friend, so open your eyes. Open your eyes. Jacob laid a stone and he slept therein and in the night he had a vision and he saw a ladder that connected the earth and the heavens and he saw angels ascending and descending and at the top of it was the son of God and he said I am the God of Abraham 
and he began to give him strange revelations that's what the Lord is doing in this place hallelujah tonight we have come to press that's the theme of our meeting tonight to press into more of the realities of the spirit koinonia is for men and women who know that there is more know that there is more to his glory surround me oh lord surround me oh lord. surround me lord surround me oh as the mountains surround Jerusalem. Oh, Hallelujah. Exodus 33. Thank you for your mighty presence. Exodus 33. You know, he deserves royalty, and every time. We have the opportunity to bless him. I love it when we praise God and bless him in concert. Because then he receives the glory and the honor and the majesty. For the train of his robe fills the temple. A cloud of heavenly worshippers surrounding his throne. And we join with them now, crying, Holy, Holy is the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Can we bless his excellency? I see. Exodus 33, verse 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it outside the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation which was outside the camp and Moses and it came to pass when Moses went out onto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle verse 9 and it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses and all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door 11 and the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend and he turned again into the camp but his servant Joshua the son of Nun the young man departed not out of the tabernacle Hallelujah. So take a break for one minute and walk to 10 people and tell them it's good to have you tonight. God bless you. Come on, do that quickly. Make sure you walk up to 10 people. Participate in the worship. It's part of the service. Walk up to 10 people. Hug them, bless them. Just impart something. 
impart the love of God, bless them. Whether or not you know them, say it's good to have you around. Make sure you smile, don't frown. There's joy in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. You're welcome. Be seated in Jesus' name. It's good to have everyone around. Hallelujah. Tonight I'll be speaking. I want us to pray. Tonight really is a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please quicken our spirits that we'll pray tonight hallelujah so how many of you are ready to pray we're going to pray it's part of the pressing hallelujah and i'll be speaking briefly on what i title hunger for greater glory hunger for greater glory hallelujah oh yes we need more we need more 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 that has been my cry. I've been telling the Lord, Lord, more. I know that I've seen certain dimensions of your glory. But I need more. And I had to search through scripture and find a man whose life models my hunger. And in my quest, I fell across a great man that the Bible calls the meekest man on earth, Moses. Moses operated in such a realm of intimacy with God. Such a contagious hunger and a realm. Certain people seem to walk in certain dimensions of intimacy. For instance, the Bible tells us about a man called Enoch. He said, and Enoch walked with God and he was not. And Hebrews 11 tells us of men and women who this earth was not worthy of. And so God is teaching and training us. And I trust that tonight, God will ignite a hunger in our spirit for more of his glory. For more of his glory. Hallelujah. Hmm. So let's continue our reading. Verse 12. I'll just run it down to 23. Just listen, participate in the reading. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, bring up these people now can you imagine this is this is moses talking with god hallelujah imagine the, the koinonia the participation this is a man interacting with his maker hallelujah see thou sayest unto me bring up these people and thou hast not let me know whom will whom thou will send with me yet thou hast said i know thee by name and thou hast also found grace in my sight verse 13 now therefore I pray thee if I have found grace in thy sight do what show me now thy way that I may know thee that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people verse 14 and he said my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest look up I need you to know that every dimension of God you experience in the kingdom will come as a result of your pressing. Are you following me now? Every dimension of God you truly desire to experience or you experience the realms that we are all functioning in right now is a product of our pressing. Hallelujah. A product of our hunger. A product of all of those questions. How many of you have found yourself asking all kinds of questions and you will not just stop? I need you to understand that the Holy Spirit puts those questions there. Because the answer to those questions is the portal that opens you up to a new realm. Hallelujah. And so there needs to be a pressing for us to experience any realm of God's glory at all. God desires for us to step into the reality of his glory 
of his kingdom, of his power, of his presence. He desires for us to begin to stand from his reality. Where we begin to function like gods on this earth. Psalms 82 says, Know ye not that ye are gods, and that all of you are children of the Most High. And so the Lord desires for us to step into a realm of intimacy, to step into a realm of understanding, a realm of light, a realm of revelation. Hallelujah. A realm of his presence, where we'll be able to accommodate greater dimensions of his glory. Greater weights of his presence. Brighter lights of his revelation. That's God's desire for us. Hallelujah. But he designed it in such a way that he doesn't just bring it and throw it. He said, do not cast your pearls before swine. So every time God wants to initiate you into a higher dimension, he uses hunger. Say after me, hunger. God puts a hunger, a dissatisfaction in your spirit that begins to compel you. So that every accomplishment you've made is swallowed up in his glory. And you suddenly begin to ride into another adventure of his presence. Another adventure of his glory. Another adventure of his power. And how he longs for us to uncover the mysteries of his personality. God longs that we come to know him personally. God longs that we come to know him just beyond new birth. Okay, I know Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm going to heaven. And that's why we're here tonight. Hallelujah. Moses said, Lord, I'm a great leader and I have a nation to lead. But if I have found grace in your sight, there is a higher dimension. I've seen your power. I've seen the wind, the earthquake, fire, and, and all kinds of things that characterize your presence. I've seen the cloud, the glory, the visible manifestations. He said, but if I have found grace in your side, I press for more. I know that there are greater dimensions of your glory. He said, show me your way. I don't just want to know your acts. Show me your ways. And the Lord looked at Moses and said, I have respect for your hunger. My presence will go with you. As a result of your pressing, I will give you the gift of my presence. He says, my presence will go with you. And as a result, you will have rest on all sides. And he cried and said, Lord, if your presence goeth not with us, do not take us from here. Hallelujah. Let's read on and let me show you something powerful. I trust that God will just ignite a hunger and will press. Thank you. We press for more of his presence and his glory. 15. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not from here. Why? Verse 16. For wherein shall it be known that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing so that I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight. And I know thee by name. 18. When he gave Moses this revelation, Moses saw that for every time you press, God opens up a portal. Then he pressed yet again. Verse 18. He said, Lord, I beseech thee, show me your glory. Show me your glory. I asked you for your ways and you said your presence will go with me. Now, Lord, show me your glory. Show me. I contend for your glory. I want to know your glory. So you see where we have that song now? Oh, Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer sacrifice that's where the song comes from. Feel this Nineteen, and he said unto him, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious 
to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Look at the level of intimacy. Look at the dimension of intimacy Moses was operating. This is God, not an angel, not an archangel. God said, I cannot deny that you are pressing to know more of me. But at this point, you cannot see my face because the full expression of my glory is upon my face. However, I will hide you behind a rock and I will pass and I will permit you to see my back. Hallelujah. Because I will not allow you to see my face. Not because I don't want you to see my face. You will die. For no flesh can stand the dimension of my face and all that I represent. He said, but I will do this to you. I will allow you to see my back. I hope you understand that that's how he wrote the book of Genesis to Deuteronomy. Because Moses was not there. So how did he know that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth? How did he know that the earth was dark and void and formless? When he saw the back of God, there was a dimension of koinonia. And suddenly, streams of revelation. And that's the dimension God calls the past. Hallelujah. And Moses saw. And the Bible says after that encounter, Moses stepped into a new dimension. And the nation of Israel got angry and said, want to hear God. God said, fine. Sanctify the people for three days. And then they will see what I truly look like. And on the third day, the Bible makes us to understand that God came and descended upon the mountain. And there was fire and smoke. And God said, for your own good, don't cross a certain level. Otherwise, you will die for nothing. And the Bible says, when they heard the rattling sound of his voice, the nation of Israel cried and said, God, we are sorry from today. Just speak to Moses. Whatever you tell him, we will listen. There is a dimension of God's presence that we need to press. There is a realm of higher glory. There is a realm of greater glory. John beheld his glory when he was transfigured. But in Revelation chapter 1, the Bible makes us to understand that when John was caught up to heaven, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And when he was caught up to heaven, he said, I saw one that looked like the son of man. However, I saw certain features that I didn't see when he was on earth. For instance, his hair was as white as wool. And his face was like the sun shining in his full strength. Out of his mouth proceeded a double-edged sword. And there were flames of fire on his eyes. John said, when I saw this, I fell like a dead man. There are dimensions of God's glory that we need to press in. And to that, I have come to stir up a hunger for those greater realms. He told Nathaniel, you shall see greater things than this. Greater dimensions of his presence. Greater dimensions of his glory. Where his presence comes to tabernacle. I'm not just talking about you having a sense by faith, by faith. Where you become a walking tabernacle of his presence. It's like an electromagnetic field. That everywhere you move, you carry certain audacious dimensions of his presence. That everywhere you step, you are a carrier of his presence. The presence of God is so mighty. I remember when they called on Balaam to go and curse the people. And something interesting happened in scripture. Because the Bible makes us understand that at a certain time when the prophet was going to curse the people, he saw that there was a structure and an arrangement in their camp. And facing them was the, um, the um, Ark of the Covenant. And he looked, he said, I cannot curse these people for the shout of the king is in their midst. He said, these people carry the presence. I can't curse them. It won't work. I'm going to be showing you some things about the presence of God. And then we'll allow God to grant us grace to press. This has been my hunger for years. Pressing for more of his glory. The full weight of his presence. The full weight of his power. The full weight of his grace. He said, if I have found favor, oh God, 
show me your glory. And Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, call unto me. I will answer. He said, I will show you great and mighty things. I will show you. You have not seen them yet. I will show you. It was when John was caught up in heaven that we knew that heaven had some things that he had. But before we saw them, they were still there. There are certain things that when we press for the glory, God will open our eyes and our ears to understand the revelation of the Christ. To understand the revelation of the kingdom. To understand the revelation of his presence. Hallelujah. And he said, my presence will go with you. My presence will go with you. Many people really do not understand the revelation and the power of the presence of God going with a man. Moses said, I have stayed long enough to know the disadvantage of moving without your presence. And so, Lord, right on this mountain, I contend, I press, I press until your presence goes with us. Do not take us from here. Hallelujah. The presence of God. He said, for if your presence goes with us, certain things will happen. The nations will know that we are blessed. That means the presence of God creates some physical evidences. There are things that can attest to the fact that you are a carrier of God's presence. And there are benefits that flow when you carry his presence. And that's what I want to share with us very briefly. I told you tonight it's a prayer meeting. A call to press. To press for more of him. The presence of God causes men to see his goodness and his favor upon your life. Let me tell you something. When the presence of God mantles you, men will acknowledge the fact that the goodness and the grace, the favor of God is upon your life. As we press for more of his presence. As we open up ourselves for more of the weightiness of his presence. We become like him. We become saturated with his personality. The fullness of all that he is. And all that he represents is infused in us. And we carry the weight of that glory. And the earth cannot but acknowledge the fact. That truly the goodness and the favor of the Lord mantles our lives hallelujah the presence of God separates you it distinguishes you when the presence of God comes upon your life it separates you Moses said if your presence does not go with us how can the people know that we are separate the presence of God distinguishes a man brothers and sisters it will separate you it will distinguish you. Before your world, it will cause the world to see and acknowledge the fact that your God reigns. As we press for more of his glory, as we press for more of his presence, it begins to birth your uniqueness. The more you contend for his glory, your uniqueness is revealed. Then the world begins to see the fullness of his deposit and his investment inside of you. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 he says call unto me I want to show you certain things however I only respond to your pressing there must be a hunger and he said call unto me and I will show you I will cause your eyes to see I will cause your ears to hear I will bring you into a dimension of intimacy I will show you my secrets the Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants i will show you my secrets what men are struggling to get call unto me i just need you to press for when you enter that zone of the glory that realm of eternity there you will find that which your soul longs for i will give you wisdom i will give you an impartation the presence of god We must press. We have a mandate to press. 
For us to be relevant in our time and in our generation, we must be literal carriers of his Shekinah, his manifested presence. Such that when you stand before people, they can see the illumination, the light, the glory, the power that radiates from your person, not just your spirit, but your spirit, your soul, and your body. That's how you look at certain people and you know that the Lord is with them. They are carriers of his presence. They represent true ambassadors of the kingdom. And it comes as a response to a sincere hunger. A sincere hunger. Hallelujah. The Lord told me that seven things will happen tonight as we press into his glory. And I want to read it out for you so that you can connect with what God is going to be doing. That as we press into his presence, the first thing that will happen is that we're going to step into a realm of unusual faith. Unusual faith. When you step into the realm of God's glory, the capacity is imparted upon you to believe him more than ever. You can say, Lord, I believe you can change my family. I don't know what has suddenly happened to my spirit, man. But in my sincere pursuit, I now agree with you that this is not impossible. I now agree with you that this is not over yet. As we press and contend for greater glory, there's going to be an impartation of faith in your spirit. I'm not just talking of mental faith. Faith that produces results. Faith that subdues nations, that shuts the mouths of lions. Faith that you can use and decree. Speak. According to Job 22 verse 28, it says, And thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. So as we contend for his glory, we will collide with real faith tonight. And how we need real faith in our time. How we need real faith. How many of you would like to speak and begin to see things happen? It's called the faith of the Son of God. It's part of his nature. And as we press into him, these are some of the deposits that we will live with. And the Lord told me there will be a stepping into a real realm of faith. Faith is not just an impartation, it's a realm. Faith is a realm. It's a realm where your spirit comes to terms with the ability of God and you lose the ability to doubt him. It's the realm of faith. Number two, we'll be stepping into a higher realm of power. A higher realm of power. Real power. Real power. Real power. Power to do the works of Jesus Christ. Power to heal the sick. Power to cast out devils. Power to raise the dead. As we press, we will collide with real power. A powerless Christian is an ineffective Christian. Hallelujah. Power to speak. Power to bless. Power to decree. Power to call forth blessings into the lives of people. These are derivatives of his presence as we press. It's my desire that we come to points where when you walk up to somebody and say, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. Suddenly the heavens are opened over that person. Because you are extending the manifestations of the presence of God into this person's life. Real power, exousia, ability, dunamis. The capacity to reproduce God's results. The second thing that the Lord is going to be granting us access to. Number three is we're going to step into a new realm of favor. A higher realm of favor. Now please believe me, all of these things I'm telling you are things that the Lord communicated. Stepping into realms of his favor. That's why he said, my presence will go with you. And part of the things that you'll find in my presence is grace, favor. And as a result, I will give you rest. Say after me, rest. And the word of God says, he that has entered into his rest has ceased from all his works. There are many of us that are struggling too much. We are struggling too much. 
end the disappointments and the struggles in your life by pressing in for the favor of God. When you collide with the favor of God, men will run over and bless you for reasons you cannot explain. Are you listening to me? The favor of God has no explanation. You cannot explain why somebody will travel a long journey to come and bless you and you say, I'm going back. And people say, what in the world is this? Derivatives of pressing into his presence. There are benefits, my brothers and sisters, of pressing into the presence of God. Pressing for more of his glory. Pressing for greater glory. Number three, number four. The Lord says we are stepping into a new level of revelation. A new level of light. Insight. Insight by the Spirit. Prophetic insight. The capacity to comprehend spiritual things. And make earthly relevance out of them. The capacity to comprehend things. He says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching the inward parts of the belly. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And the Holy Ghost is that light that comes upon that candle. And sets that candle on fire. And suddenly you begin to see the things that you couldn't see. He will grant you understanding. The Bible says in Hebrews, in, in Isaiah chapter 11, it says, and he will make you of quick understanding. Supernatural insight as a product of pressing into his presence. Suddenly you will see a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. And mysteries will begin to connect themselves. And God will open you up to the knowledge of his ways. When you know his ways, you can reproduce his results. The only way to be able to reproduce a result is to understand the processes that lead to that result. Hallelujah. Just watching him play the keyboard is not enough to make you know how to play keyboard. When you learn the ways, then you will know how to reproduce his results. Number five, tonight as we press, we are going to be colliding with a higher dimension of discernment. There will be a mantle of the spirit of discernment. The spirit of discernment. The capacity to judge which spirit is behind whatever manifestation, whatever action, whatever word. And let me tell you something. This is a superior dimension in the realm of the spirit. When you receive the capacity to judge between the manifestations of spirits it will end error in your life discernment discernment will save you from all kinds of trouble as a matter of fact the bible ties discernment to spiritual maturity it says strong meat are for them who are mature of full age who by reason of use have exercised their senses unto godliness to discern between good and evil We desire discernment. Discernment. The capacity to stand and watch. And you see things happening in your family. That's what Jesus, op the, Jesus operated in that strange dimension. He saw a woman. Who was bound. I mean was. Had bent over. And by discernment he knew. That it was more than healing. It was an operation of demons. And he said, woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. They brought to him a boy who was epileptic. And by discernment, he looked at that child. And the Bible says he rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit. What is the relationship between deafness, dumbness, and epilepsy? The power of discernment. Discernment will help us to know what to pray on. Discernment will help us to know how to receive the results we ought to receive. Discernment will open us to realms of visionary encounters. Discernment will open us to the riches of the spirit. That's the fifth thing. Number six. As we contend for more of his glory, 
we will collide with liberty. That's what the Holy Ghost told me. Liberty. Liberty means freedom. Absolute emancipation from bondage. The presence of God. The Bible says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. There are several of us who are suffering all kinds of things. Wait as a result of the bondage of darkness. But as you contend for his presence, Everything that represents darkness will fade away. Believe me. It says now where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. 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 And the last thing the Lord is going to be releasing upon us, even as we contend for his presence, is the strength of the Lord. The strength of the Lord supernatural strength Paul prayed and said I pray that ye be strengthened in your inner man you need strength for the journey brothers he said if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small and he prayed in Ephesians chapter 3 he said I pray that ye be strengthened in your inner man Colossians chapter 1 also talks to us about being strengthened in our inner man there is need for strength for the journey is far for the journey is far for the journey is far and we need to collide with his strength seven things that as we press the Lord will be exposing us so that's our goal for tonight a hunger for greater glory and we're going to be crying and pressing together and say Lord more more of your glory and all of these spiritual deposits, many of us will find ourselves stepping into different dimensions of these riches. And if we do this, then we are done. The job is complete for tonight. How many of you believe that you are going to step into all these dimensions? Hallelujah. It takes a participation with the Spirit. It takes a pressing. It takes a hunger. You must see a need, brothers and sisters. For as long as you're satisfied with nominal Christianity, just come to church. After all, I'm fine. No, there's got to be more. Say after me, more. A hunger for greater dimensions. When the Lord showed me this, I said, Lord, I need a baptism of a greater weight of your presence upon my life. Oh, for I know what the presence of God can do to a man. The presence of God truly brings rest in your life. Truly brings rest. If you have, if you don't have the, I'm, I'm talking of the manifested presence of God. Not just the presence of the Holy Spirit living in you. A higher dimension of his presence. A cloud of his presence. And it's my desire, I prayed for every one of us today. I said, Lord, let everyone live with your presence. That you begin to walk as a living carrier of his presence. That everywhere you go, God is there. When you step into a room, you step in with all kinds of spiritual blessings. Whether you know it or not, you will bless people unconsciously as a result of the presence of God that you carry. And men will attest to the fact that there is something about your life. That there is something about your life. That when someone comes and sows a seed to your life, before he turns in that realm of glory, he will not even know the difference between seed time and harvest. Because you not only are a fertile soil, you are a soil that exists in the realm of eternity. That when you look at someone and say you are blessed, your words connect the person from the realm that you are existing in. And the person begins to step into certain realities. The presence of God will open you up to visions of Jesus. How we need visions of Jesus. Many of you have seen him in your dreams. Many of you have had all kinds of encounters. But did you know he wants to call you to a deeper level of fellowship? Jesus wants us to see his face. He wants to talk to us. Many of us will be opened by discernment to angelic realms. Where you not only unconsciously bump yourself into the activities of angels, but you know that you'll be worshipping in a room. How many of you have been worshipping in a room and you know I'm not alone in this place? And then you 
discern that there are not only angels. You don't know how you know, but you know that there are elders in this place. You know that there are saints in this place. And you know, and it motivates you to worship his glory and worship his majesty. Never lose sight of God's presence is the secret of rest. And if you ever desire rest in your life, it's going to be found in his presence. That's why the Bible says, he that dwells in the secret place. There is a place he calls the secret place. The secret place. The Bible says, when it was time for Samuel to anoint Saul, he didn't anoint him outside. He drew him to a secret chamber. There Saul encountered an anointing. Every time God wants to impart things upon men, he draws them to the secret he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and i will say of the lord he is my help and so i want us to press tonight we're going to be crying and pressing for more of him oh that he will show us more of his glory that his beauty will mantle our lives that he will cause us to be strange men on earth. The Bible says there are certain people whom the earth was not worthy of. These were men and women who pressed for his glory. The glory of God brings favor, revelation, access, discernment. Are these not the things that we run after? But the presence of God will bring it. It's my desire that every one of us who have come here tonight that even as we press, we will encounter these dimensions. Suddenly, people will look at your life and say, Shei, what is, what is it about your life? What is it about your words? Every time you speak, your words come like rocks, like thunder. How come? What is it about your language? It's not about the English. It's about a realm that it proceeds from. That's the dimension we must press. There is a cry tonight that we press for more. Greater glory. There are generals in this place. And that's why God is beckoning on us to press for greater glory. Greater glory. To say, Lord, I can see more. I can step into a greater level of perfection and accuracy. I can step into a higher level of discernment. I can step into a higher level of illumination where the Bible is not just a storybook. Opens up the scroll and the seals and you begin to comprehend the mysteries of the spirit. He said, who is worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls? For in that book are archives of the spirit. And when the scroll, the seven scrolls are unlocked and the seal is opened, then your eyes will see. You will see that which is not permitted for men to see. You will hear that which is not permitted for men to hear. And you will step in realms that are supposed to be out of bounds. The Bible says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it come into the comprehension of any man what God has in store for them that love him. He said, but God has revealed them to a certain generation of people men and women who will press press for his glory beyond titles press for his glory beyond recognition as you press for his glory his presence will mantle your life his beauty his energy will come upon your life and then you will be a sign and a wonder I assure you from the least to the greatest in this place. His presence will turn you into an inferno of fire. The Bible says he maketh his angels, spirits, and his ministers, flames of fire. As you press, then the heavens are open unto you. And John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I saw seven lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands was one like the Son of Man. And his hair was as white as wool. His face was like the sun shining. 
in his full strength. He said, out of his mouth proceeded a double-edged sword. Tonight we are contending. Listen. Hallelujah. I want us to take the next 10 to 15 minutes to press. The altar is open. You want to lie down. You want to shift your chair. Whatever you want to do. Instrumentalists for the next 15 minutes don't stop. I need us to press. God is training us. God is building us. You came here tonight because you want to press. Whatever has position you want to assume. And for the next 15 minutes, as we pray in the spirit, press. Sheka paria kata. Lengro sotori kotelaha. Marie ke parando sata. E paria da 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 da. Masata ya da 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 da. Reketele masiga. E korianto so parika ta. Rekoto so reketele. Come 
Let me experience unprecedented dimensions of your favor. Unprecedented dimensions of your favor. Unprecedented dimensions of your favor. I press your strength. The journey is far. I press your strength. Presence of God is mighty. 
Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. The Lord responds to true hunger. The Lord responds to true hunger. The Lord responds to true hunger. When we genuinely press, we will step into realms we never believed were possible. Don't you think you are wasting your time? Lord, for my life, new dimensions. New dimensions. I desire new dimensions for my life. New dimensions. I cry new dimensions. New nails for us, Lord. New dimensions. New dimensions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is koinonia. Where God exposes us to his light. And where we are changed. Where we receive where we are being. You may not realize how much upgrading, how much freedom, how much faith, how much power that this has brought into our lives. Only the future will tell how much we are stepping because we are not yet there. It's a journey that lingers beyond this service. Lord, we truly appreciate you. We truly, truly appreciate you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. We never take your presence for granted. Never misuse and abuse. The benefits of your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, like Moses, let your presence go with us. Let your presence go with us. 
Let your presence go with us. For we can do nothing outside of you. Let your presence go with us. Lord, in an unusual dimension, beginning from tonight, in an unusual way, let us leave this place, lead trial careers of your presence. Let it affect the people in our jobs, our rooms, our ministries. Let every virtue of the Spirit that can flow from your presence flow through us. Thank you for your faith. Thank you because from tonight we we'll begin to decree and see new things and see the wilderness become a fruitful field and a fruitful field become a forest. Thank you because our words are empowered. Thank you for the liberty that flows from your presence. Thank you for the revelation, insight, unusual understanding of your word and of the principles of life. Thank you for glorious encounters. Glorious encounters. Glorious encounters. Glorious encounters of your spirit. Thank you for strength. Thank you for depositing strength for the journey. Strength in our spirits. Strength in our minds. Strength in our bodies. Thank you for liberty. Liberty over the limitations of this realm. Liberty over the oppression and the devices of Satan and the sons and the schemings of the sons of disobedience. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your favor. New levels of favor. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your hand. Thank you for the blessings of your presence. We live to love your presence. Let your presence never depart from us, O God. We know the value of your presence. That from today we will speak from your presence. We will lead from your presence. Your presence is the secret of this ministry. Your presence is the secret. Lord, we cry. On behalf of your people, I cry. Let your presence not depart from us. For outside of your presence, there is no impact. Outside of your presence, there is no transformation. Outside of your presence, there is no power. Outside of your presence, there is no revelation. Outside of your presence, there is no discernment. Outside of your presence, there is no favor. Outside of your presence, there is no fear. In one minute, can we sing this song together? More of you, more of you, more of you, Jesus, more of you, sing more of you, sing more of you, sing more of you, more of you, for the last time now.
Lord, we pray that beyond tonight, we will step into unusual dimensions of your presence. Teach us to live in your presence. Bring great results into our lives on account of your presence. Separate us as a result of your presence. And cause our community, Zaria, Kaduna State, and even this nation and the world, to know that we are carriers of your presence. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.